All right, so let's then move ahead. Um, we have gone through step one where we used some reference geometry. Then we went to step two where we were able to create some grids. And then we went to now, now we're moving into step three, which is paneling, right? So we're going to look at paneling a 2D motif first, and then we'll transition into paneling a 3D motif. Now, paneling tool supports populating patterns either by connecting paneling grid points or by mapping a given unit pattern to a unit grid. Now, we will be doing an advanced course um, on constructing custom components vis-a-vis -vis, um, uh, actually connecting paneling grid points. That's a, a whole lot more advanced um, than what we can actually do in, the, in this first um, kind of introduction to paneling tools. Um, but we will be uh, following it up with a more advanced one. Now, when we're talking about populating or paneling, we're talking about having a design motif that then fills in right to the various grid positions within an overall paneling grid. Now, there's a, a few important things to understand about this. The first one is that the size of the grid, the spacing of the rows and columns, does not limit you in terms of the size of your design motif because the design motif is essentially an abstract element. So that element will then be scaled or kind of morphed into the grid in order to be able to fit. So the first thing we're going to look at then is PT Morph 2D. And again, the PT is paneling tools, so paneling tools morph 2D. And what it does is it morphs curves to grid cells directly. Okay, so if we take a look over here, um, we have a grid, right? which is parametric at this point. We can kind of uh, make changes here and have this update. And we need to be able to then start to panel. So I'm going to go ahead and save this as a new file. And give it an underscore working. and take a look at the next tab in paneling tools. Now, somebody was asking about how do you change the scale of these numbers. Um, if you notice, I used a slider here into S. This is the font size. Now, in paneling tools, the first thing to do is take a look at panel 2D. And you'll notice that um, as we moved through here, we went from grid over to utility, now we're at panel 2D. So the simplest thing to do would just be to generate some borders. So let's, let's take a look at this generate borders. And if I take my grid and bring that right into here, we'll be connected to the grid, and then it'll ask for um, how do you want this panel to be constructed? Now, by default, uh, the shape being straight is fine, so we'll just say set integer to zero. And when that happens, you'll see that our grid is filled with these cells. I'm just going to copy my design motif over to here. And you can see that this is really what I want to be working with. And this, by default, will build out that border. But that's not necessarily the case with every single type of object that you want to work with. So we'll just put a little uh, hold on this guy and see if we can't find a different way to do this. Now, under Panel 2D, you'll see that there is, uh, for instance, something called Morph 2D. And the Morph 2D will actually morph curves to grid cells. So here you can specify pattern curves. And so you can actually specify for yourself um, what you want to morph into the grid. 
So we know where our grid is coming from. We know that it's this planar grid right here. But we haven't yet defined what our pattern curves are. When we talk about pattern curves, what we're really talking about is our design motif. So we'll drop in a curve container here. Now, our motif is actually structured around a few different things. We have our hills or our mountains. We have our valleys and then we have our border. So when we do this, we probably want to keep these guys as three separate containers. Each one of these containers will, con will contain or hold reference a very important component of our design motif. So this would be my mountain, my valley, and my border. So I'll call this border. I'm going to call this one valley. If you want, you can call it valleys, for instance. I'm just going to say mountain. Be consistent. And I'm going to right-click on mountain and set multiple curves. So I'm going to click one and two. I'm going to do the same for valley, set multiple, I'm going to go 1 and 2, and then I'm going to set my border. I'm just turning the preview off real quick. And since I have my mountains here, I'm just going to drop that right into PC. When I do that, you'll see that I get this update. I'm just going to move that guy out of the way. Okay, that guy updates. Um, and we can see right here our mountain lines. So I'm going to go ahead and drop in another Morph 2D. And bring my grid in my valleys, and then last I'm going to bring in my border. All right, so this is really my output here. So I'll use my group trick, edit group, and I'll give these names, right? So this is my mountain, my valleys, right? And what this will ensure is that whenever we um, bake uh, our output, right, let's say ultimately what you'd like to do is laser cut these things and um, be able to construct something, this will ensure that everything remains um, you you know, independent and easily uh, managed in terms of the, uh, the uh, laser cutting process. Now, when I go over here, you'll notice that my, um, all right, my lines don't have any kind of line weight or anything. Um, now, that's okay if you're going to ultimately indicate that line weight in, um, in your laser cutter, but for instance, you may want to um, show how those lines would um, look um, in the Grasshopper interface or in the Rhino interface vis-a-vis uh, -vis Grasshopper um, as you're modeling. And that's really something that I think is an, uh, an incredible um, asset um, to you uh, as a designer when you're working is to be able to have in the viewport really the, um, the visual data that you need to be able to understand the relevance of the various decisions you're making as you move along. So the mountains, right? We know that these mountains have a dash line. And in Grasshopper, um, under the curve menu in Division, there is an object called dash pattern. And the dash pattern will ask you for a curve, and it'll ask you for um, a pattern. Now, not knowing what the pattern wants, right, or what to set here, um, you might not really have a, a clear way to begin working with this tool or with this object. 
but if we go over to um, Dimension in Rhino, and we go down to uh, the, let's see if we have our line types in here. We'll just go to Dimension Styles, and this will give us a little shortcut, and I can go right here to uh, Line Types. You can see that right here when I click, hidden dots, um, dashed, it shows you the pattern right here that's used to create these different dashes. So if I say hidden, I can see 0 0.0787. And so I'll just copy that and hit OK. I'll drop in a panel here, hit OK, and just put that right in there. I turn my preview off here. I now have dashed lines in um, in my Rhino viewport, right? Now the pattern, what it actually says, is going to be related to the units that you're working in. So I'm working in inches right now. So if you're working in some you know feet, or if you're working in meters, or centimeters, or etc., um, that's going to change. Okay, so um, if you have line types that you're comfortable with in Rhino, um, just use the pattern as it, as it reads in your um, line type display um, interface, which is under the file properties. The same interface we were just looking at. Now if I copy and paste this guy down, I can see that I now have my other dashes. Now, to vary these, I might want to say 0.15, for instance. So just be a, a larger, right, dash line, or 0.03, smaller dash line. Now, the border here that we see if you notice, this border um, is going to have overlap, okay? And that's a really important thing to um, pay attention to um, because of the fact that you'll have duplicate lines there. Um, but for right now, we'll just go ahead and um, say that that's okay. Um, and we will take care of that in Rhino. Uh, via uh, delete duplicates. But you can see here, right, this is the outer boundary uh, and these are the inner um, curves which have overlap. All right, so these are our mountains. All right, and if you don't want to keep adding more and more groups like that, you could just take this guy and right click on the group and say add. Now this is you know our mountain output, right? This would be oops, sorry. I'm gonna just right click on this guy and add to group our valleys. And this would be our border, right? But actually, you know, this is really a valley at this point. Um, but again, we'll have to make some um, adjustments to that uh, later.